Hi class, welcome back. I'm Matt Fisher, your accounting professor. So we've gone over the sales budget. We've gone over the production budget. Now we're gonna take a look at the direct materials budget. Remember, we're manufacturing bags of potato chips. So you can see here that we're starting this direct materials budget with what we need to produce. So in our production budget, at the very bottom of that budget, we said we need to produce 10,400 bags in January, 11,800 in February, and 10,800 bags of potato chips in March for a total of 33,000 for the quarter. Now I'm gonna give you some more information here because we're gonna need this. We're anticipating that we need to produce 11,000 bags in April. Now, the first step when we're preparing a, a direct materials budget is to convert this into the material. So when you're making potato chips, you need potatoes. So for each bag, let's assume that we need two pounds of, potato, two pounds of potatoes per bag. So then right here it says times the quantity per, that's pound, per pound. So I just told you, I just gave you this information. We need two pounds of potatoes per bag of potato chips. Right, so this has to be given to you. So now we, we know how many we're gonna produce and each one needs two pounds. So that gets us 20,800 pounds of potatoes in January, 23,000, 23,600 in February, and 21,000 600 in March, and then we're gonna do the April right now, and so two times 11,000 would be 22,000 in April. So there's the April number, all right? Now the rest of this looks very similar to our production budget. So let's take a look at this. We add in our ending inventory, let's add those together, subtract out our beginning inventory to get how many pounds of potatoes we're going to need by month and then in the quarter total, all right? But what we need to know is, well, what is this ending inventory needs, all right? Well, let's do the same arrow that we did before for our production budget. And let's assume the problem tells us that we need 10% of the next month's needs in ending inventory. So next month's 23,600, we need 10% of that to start the month off in February. So our ending inventory needs in January would then be 2,360. That's 10% of this number. So now we add this together and we get 23,160. That's what we need to produce these bags of chips and have some ending inventory left over. But then the question is, but do we already have some? When we start January 1st, do we already have some potatoes in our plant where we manufacture these bags of chips? And we do. So the problem tells us that our beginning inventory, <coughs> excuse me, is 2,080. Uh, pounds of potatoes what we already have so if we need this but we already have that then we're going to subtract that out to get 21,080 as the pounds that we need to to purchase in order to manufacture these potato chips all right so this makes sense but you really need to think about it. Think about what we're doing here. Don't just memorize this process. Try and think about what we're doing, why we're doing it, because it makes sense if you think about it, all right? Obviously you can memorize it, but I think it's easier to really understand it and know what it is, and then memorization isn't really needed. You just know it in your brain, all right? So now let's move forward here. February, 11,800 times two gets us to 23,600. We need 10% in ending inventory. So 10% of the 21,600 gets us 2,160. 
So that's our desired ending inventory. We add these together to get 25,760. Subtract out our beginning inventory. All right, so what is our beginning inventory? Well, our ending inventory in January, we think it's gonna be 2,360. So then that same relationship as in our production budget, this ending inventory becomes our beginning inventory in, uh, in February. So 2360. So we subtract out our beginning inventory and that will get us 23,400 as the pounds of potatoes that we plan to purchase in February. Now in March, 10,800 times two, 21,600. Our 10% comes from here. 10% of 22,000 gets us 2,200. So that gets us uh, 23,800. Whoops, and I just made a mistake. Twenty three thousand eight hundred. Our ending inventory. I'm sorry. Our beginning inventory comes from our ending inventory in February, which is two thousand one hundred and sixty. So now, when we subtract that out, we'll get twenty one thousand six hundred and forty pounds. That's for March. Now let's just finish this up. So we can take two pounds times 33 gets us 66,000. Our first quarter ending inventory is this number right here. It's the 2,200 because that's the ending inventory for the quarter. So that gets us 68,200 for the quarter. Our beginning inventory for the quarter is 2,080. So now when we subtract that out, we'll get uh, 66,120. So now we have the pounds of potatoes that we need to purchase by month for the quarter in total. So we wanna plan things and make sure that we can purchase these so that we can manufacture the bags of potato chips that we're planning on selling. All right. Now the next step is for a lot of budgets is, well, what's the cost of this? Well, let's say that we're buying these for 25 cents a pound. So I'm going to add in here 25 cents per pound for all of these. So all we do is we take 21,080 pounds times 25 cents a pound gets us $5,270 in January, gets us $5,850 in February, $5,410 in March, and then lastly, when we add these all up or we multiply that out, we'll get $16,530 for the quarter in total. So this is our direct materials budget. It makes sense. Spend some time, think about what we're doing here. It follows the production budget very closely. All of this part right here is, is very similar to the production budget. The first step though is to convert this into the direct material. And in our case, the direct material is potatoes. Now, if your product has another material, then you need to do one of these direct material budgets for each material you have. So, you know, when you're making potato chips, you all, might also need oil, okay? You need salts, different things like that. So you might have a salt budget. You might have a direct materials oil budget, okay? Whatever your product needs in order to be manufactured, you would need to have a direct materials budget for each direct material. All right. Well, class, I hope this has helped you. I hope to see you in the next video. The next video we're gonna do is the direct labor budget. That budget's a lot easier. So stick around, 
watch that video and good luck in accounting.